We were together in the effort to make secular Judaism known to people who are secular. It's one of the paradoxes. Most Jews in the world are secular. They only don't know it. <laughs> it is the old Moliere saying, I never knew that I always talk prose. <laughs> people who are secular but do not know how to articulate their beliefs feel confused for no reason. Our our task is to make them articulate their beliefs. Because their beliefs are very clear. Their way of life expresses their beliefs. No matter what the surveys say, every survey in the world, when you ask people, do you believe in God, they say, yes, I do believe in God. On condition that you don't ask another question, what do you mean? <laughs> And because, because people do not believe in God as a personal commander or a personal uh, creator of the world who can rule their life, they live a life without God. Therefore, I called also my book Judaism Without God because this is the life we live. And through our life, we express our beliefs. There are now eight secular rabbis in Israel. Ten years ago, nobody could believe it. Nobody could believe that there is such a thing as a secular rabbi. <laughs> now, in Israel, nobody is amazed anymore that there are secular rabbis. Secular rabbis, like Sivan, are members of councils of rabbis. Rabbis, reform rabbis, orthodox rabbis, conservative rabbis are willing to sit with a secular rabbi in one council. Suddenly, when the army makes a course in Judaism, in pluralistic Judaism, they do not invite only an orthodox, a reform, and a conservative as they used to do. They have to invite a secular rabbi. Suddenly, secular Judaism became legitimized. And this is one of the many influences of Sheridan Wine. In my own family, his influence, of course, was great, and we were ready for it. Many of you, you know already that I consider myself a traditional Jew, an atheist, the son of an atheist, the grandson of an atheist. <laughs> but now I am proud to announce that I am also a father and a grandfather of atheists. <laughs> So our tradition, our tradition is, uh, was ready for Shirley. And therefore, we were not amazed at all when our grandson was to be bar mitzvah and was asked what portion of the week, or the portion of the week that was designed by him by some accident of calendar, if he wants it. He said, no, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want any portion of the week. He wants the Bible. And we asked him, what do you mean? He said, I was always interested in God. This is one literary character that always fascinated me. <laughs> and I'd like to make my bar mitzvah a trial of God. Because he did some very important things in ruling some, making some important just laws. But he transgressed all his laws. The most important law was, thou shalt not kill. But he killed all the time. He is to blame for massacres of multitudes of people, like in the flood. He is to blame for the killing of 3,000 Jews who admired God in the form of a golden calf. He is to blame for the opposition were led by Korach, the opposition to Moses, that when they expressed their views as an opposition against nepotism, he opened the earth and buried them alive. I mean, this is terrible murders. And I'd like to make my bar mitzvah a trial 
against the murders of God. Well, uh, his mother and myself, of course, uh, agreed immediately to help him if he wants 